Hey commanders, it's Mr. Mean Raindrop, and today we are going to do Storm Shield Defense number two. That is the next item on our quest list, and it's the first one we'll do without Ray giving us a step by step. She'll give us some hints, but mostly it's on us. This defense will use a little bit of trap tunneling, you'll learn just the basics of it. A little bit of block offs, again, just the basics and some trapping. You don't need them to do this defense. You can sit and shoot your gun the entire time, but you're learning to use your guns and which guns you like. You should do the same with traps while you're going up levels because at high levels, traps are as important, actually more important than guns because so many husks that are so powerful come at you at once that you need the traps to kind of thin the herd. So we're going to start right from the get-go. I'm going to show you how to build tunnels. I'm going to show you how to do block-offs. And I'm going to talk some strengths and weaknesses of the traps available. Our selection of traps is limited, but yours should be similar to mine. So I have a couple that I've found, and I have schematics to make others, and I have a little bit of materials to make some. So we'll stretch them out and make do, and then we'll shoot whatever makes it through. This Storm Shield Defense is the last one before we start expanding and putting in new amplifier they call them amplifiers but extensions to the storm shield Amazing work out there, and we'll Amazing. let ray talk here but we're not out of the woods yet our home base storm shield is too small we'll need to expand i think i know a way to expand the storm shield it's a little dangerous but we can handle it so that complication i mentioned as it turns out, the Storm Shield has some explosive qualities. Truth be told, it's basically a bomb. We don't know why it produces a shield instead of a small crater. It's just cool like that. So, this upgrade might kill us all, but hear me out, it might not. So let's get started. We don't have any intel this time. The attack could come from any direction. You might want to prepare for an attack from the east and the west. So we have defenses on the south from our first storm shield defense. And anything you build before you hit expand shield will be here permanently. Anything you build after you hit expand shield will only stay for this mission. So since we have defenses to the south, and I happen to know that no attack ever comes from the north, we just have to protect the east and west, and that's what she told us. And she drew us green boxes to show us where the husks will be coming in. This big open space is like a funnel that they're just going to run right through and attack our storm shield. So we want to take some steps to slow them down. So this is your basic trap tunnel. Left wall, a husk facing wall, and then over, a right wall, and a, and a shield facing wall. That makes them run a little zigzag pattern and it's not much but believe it or not it's powerful um, this is your most basic tunneling technique and it slows the husks down a little bit and it's useful all the way through the game there are other techniques but this one comes up again and again so it's a good one to know first and you just do the same thing now what we want to do is we want to bunch the husks up we want them to we want to funnel them so they come through one place. And while we're at it, we want to throw some traps in to kill some of the husks, or at least hurt them, before they get to the storm shield. Alright. So, they're going to have to run in there, zigzag around, and come out the other side. Now the husks are going to come from over here. They're going to come right up this ramp, or that ramp and they're going to have to enter our tunnels. And they can't just run straight at the storm shield, they have to kind of jigger around here and that slows them down. It also um, funnels them so that they're bunched up. Now this one only has one room, so we're going to build another on the end here. Alright. So now there's two openings, three openings. Now that little gap there, Generally, husks can't get through it, but some people have reported little ones coming through. I don't think we'll see any husklings, but we need another room on here anyway. So we'll just drop one, and that closes off that opening. 
All right, that's this side. Let's run across to the other side and build some defenses there. Now notice I haven't put traps down yet. That's our resources for traps are very limited right now. So I want to start this first. Okay, we have the box. And ramps are bad news for traps. You can do things with them. The husks are going to come from here. It's really not much you can do trap to block off on the ramp you have to do before or after. And that's a straight shot to our uh, SSD, so our storm shield. So we want to switch to metal and start building up here. Click switch to metal. The floor is not required in these locations. I like to put them in. If you're if you have a strong constructor, you should use him. And once you hit expand shield, he can place his base. Okay, so this comes out awful close to our storm shield. We don't want to give the husks a simple way to get to us. So we're going to have to do something about that. And the same is true down here. So let's build some down here. Basically, we want to tell the husks you have to come through the center hole or you're going to have to bash walls. They don't like to bash walls. It takes too long. So they'll just funnel through the hole because it's faster and their whole goal is to get to our storm shield and destroy it. We're going to spawn over here somewhere. They're going to run right at us. And as you can see, they can run straight to the storm shield. Uh, that's bad news. We want to slow them down a little bit. So now they have to zigzag to get to the storm shield, except for here. So we need to do something about this straight line they can run. And now it will funnel them, and you could shoot them as they came out, but it would be a. Uh, if you don't slow them down and you don't trap them up, um, they're going to get through to the storm shield eventually. I'm looking at what traps we have. And we've got some floor spikes, some wall spikes, some retractable floor spikes, and a pusher. So the wall launcher is the fist. And we're going to put that at the top of the ramp to shove people back down. And wall darts are good stuff, so we'll make some of those. And probably some floor spikes. And now we have to spread this stuff out between both sides and... The other side has three tunnels. This one currently has two. I think we'll probably block one off. So if you're out of duct tape, it will automatically make more for you if you have this stuff. But if you prefer to keep tighter control, you can make duct tape yourself and see how much resin and uh, herbs you have left. See, now it doesn't show up as red and we can make more. Okay, right, now it's red again, and we'll get to it in a minute, but first, another wall launcher. There's stuff to make a few more. I try to be conservative because you tend to run out of planks because lots of these traps use planks. Alright, so wall stair wall blocks off that piece. They have to beat through the wall, the stair, and the wall again to get through. I'm going to do the same thing here. Normally you want the stairs facing the direction the husks are going to come from, but at the bottom of a slope it's not that important because the stairs also block the slope. It kind of shoves them to the side, so they won't bother to beat through that. Now they're going to come up here. We want to slow them down this close to the uh, storm shield. So we'll put a couple sets of spikes in here. Now the spikes will slow them for this square and the one after or most of the one after. So they're going to come out of there and get slowed down. And remember what I said with the wall launcher? Since we have one, we're going to put it right here, and it will knock husks right back down the hill. And while they're there getting beat, or if they make it through, we'll hit them with wall darts. Wall darts have a range of three, so they're best used in a place where they can shoot three. But I quite often drop them in a place where their range is effectively only two because at two they hit a wall. 
I like to make wall dart sandwiches where you put wall darts on both sides and there's two squares in between and everything that runs through there just gets whacked. But we don't have enough wall darts to do that, so I'm trying to decide how to do defenses here. Remember, all this stuff we're building will be here next time, so we're uh, I'm trying to build with a little bit of an eye to the future, even though we'll probably have to replace these traps. They're all pretty low level. And we do have 10 storm shield defenses and lots of power levels to go here in Stonewood. So the husks will get more powerful as the storm shield defenses go up. So we'll probably want to upgrade our traps at some point. But for now, we're good. All right. Wall spikes only harm a husk if they attack it attack the wall that the spikes are on. So we're going to go ahead and put them on this wall so if they try to shorten their path by beating the wall away, they'll get hurt and die eventually. Now we need some floor spikes, but we want them out where we can see the slowed husks. You want to either slow husks in front of traps or out where you can shoot them, because if they're moving slower you can shoot them more. So I'm going to put them at the end of the tunnels here. It doesn't matter if it's the last square in the tunnel or the square outside the tunnel. Either way. I see now we have zero duct tape, but we still were able to make floor spikes. And that's because it made duct tape for us and then made the floor spikes. And we'll put this one inside just to show that there isn't a huge difference. Alright, we need some more wall darts because we want every trap tunnel to be doing some damage here. Retractable floor spikes are really slow to reset, but we have them, so let's get the damage out of them. They'll kill some husks, even if they're slow to, to reset. All these traps have a durability. The durability is the number of times they can go off before they're gone. They basically malfunction. You can replace them when their durability runs out, but usually you're too busy to do that. Um, there are some scenarios where you absolutely can and do and want to, but not this early. Okay, we can't upgrade walls, which when we get high enough level, we'll be able to click on walls and make them more, more powerful or more tough. Okay, everything we built to this point is permanent. Once we push these buttons, anything we build is temporary. So if I go outside and build stairs right now, it won't be here the next time we load into a storm shield. If a husk breaks down a wall, that wall will, will be back the next time we load up the storm shield. Alright, this will show you that we really don't need all these defenses because this is wide open, the husks are going to rush right at us, and I'm solo. And you'll find that I'm able to uh, hold them off pretty well. The few traps right up against the storm shield take care of it. Ooh beehives. Okay, beehive huskies, or husks, you want to make a priority because they leave a trail of bees that damage you. And what they'll do is run around in circles where you have to be to make it hard for you to, to fight. So you want to kill them as soon as you see them if you can. Now you'll notice my sniper and my RPG have those black lines with little yellow or little orange dots at the bottom. That means they're about to break. See, there's the cloud from the bi. Don't go into that because. All right. So we need to conserve our shots. So you watch me trying to do all headshots and letting the traps do some of the work. And that is a simple case of my weapons are starting to wear down, and I want to conserve them. And durability is basically number of shots fired. So the fewer shots you can use to kill a husk, the better off you're going to be. Alright. So we got less than a minute left and nobody's touched the walls. And they're not going to. These couple of traps plus uh, us shooting should take care of the problem. There's a few of them coming, so I'm going to let Teddy do his thing. One thing you want to do is let Teddy fire. Uh, my tendency is to hop right up next to him and shoot, but the fact of the matter is that he doesn't have durability, my weapons do, and he doesn't have limited ammo, my weapons do. So, 
I try to remind myself only to shoot if it's important, like a husky husk, because they do more damage to the walls. They hit them. And to you, just so you know. Now that Teddy's gone, we'll shoot some guys here. And that's going to be it. One more husky husk. Okay, that broke our weapon. Did you see the big red thing that popped up there? Now we have a scoped sniper. Uh, this sniper fires faster but does less damage, so you have to shoot him more. So, that's all. Not that big a deal. Okay. You can see where they're coming from. And we'll go over here and take a better look, because there's a good angle here. There we go. Those upside down cone swirly things. That's the husk spawners. They're going to come there and they're going to run right up those ramps and right into our tunnels. Oh. And lobbers. This is another one. If you see lobbers, shoot them. They are a priority target because they can throw bombs on your storm shield and damage it without coming anywhere close. And since right now our storm shield doesn't have a roof, um, every bomb they throw will do damage. So if you see one, kill it. It needs to be the first thing you take out. And you see, by funneling them, we can look at the three entrances and know exactly where they're going to come from. And they're going to be a little slow because of the spikes, so it's time to take care of them. Some husks are dying to the traps inside the tunnels. We can't go see it because we're busy fighting. Um, I, shielders more than double the hit points of the husk. So if you can kill the shielder first and then the husk, you'll be much happier. But killing shielders is harder because they uh, float around and they don't hold still. I mean, the husk will walk in a straight line. The shielder will bounce around behind him. But if you can take out the shielder first, do so. Shotguns are good for that because they have a glide broader uh, fire area. Shielders on the ground will be picked up by the next husk that walks by, whether it's a husky husk or a regular husk. So if you kill a husk and the shielder falls to the ground like that, you want to kill the shielder as soon as possible. So you don't end up having another husk shielder like this. See, that was a lot easier to kill the regular husk than was the shielder. And that's what shielders do. Shielders can come on any type of creature, so you can actually get, and I'll let these bunch up and then RPG a lot of them, because it's one shot and it kills a bunch. Problem solved. So you can get really big monsters with shielders on them, and that becomes a problem when you must take out the shield first. Hey, we're doing good, we have less than a minute left. So, as you can see, the tunnels slow them down a little bit. It funnels where they come from and where they go to. And gives you the opportunity to uh, take them out before they can do too much damage. Now these guys have hurt the wall, so I'm going to go ahead and repair it. Even though it's late in the game. Click. There we go. See the green crosses floating around there? That's the healing side for walls. Again, you see me here next to Teddy shooting. Don't do that. Let Teddy do his job. Save your ammo. And your durability. And we are done. So we'll do a little dance. And collect our rewards. If you have a strong constructor, use him. And after you click Expand Storm Shield, lay his base down in the direction that they're attacking from. So close to the east wall, or close to the south wall, or close to the west wall, depending on where they're attacking at that moment. You can move your base simply by placing it again. So, move it around and protect your walls. Our base tends to increase health. Some constructors do damage to things that attack the walls. And yet, it strengthens your fortifications and lets you focus more on shooting. You won't have Teddy, but... You'll have stronger walls, so you'll have more time to shoot them. So 
So all in all, that went pretty well. Hopefully yours does too. Uh, I'd be thrilled to hear how yours went after watching this. Um, you should have gotten the basics of tunneling, the little two by one tunnel. Basics of trapping and how to use a couple of traps. We didn't have a lot of options. Um, how to make duct tape, how to block off areas. And now we're going to see what the rewards are. We got level 4 loot, which is pretty good. Not sure how we could have gotten better. Maybe built more, search more things, I don't know. But we can go ahead and open this up and find out what, what good stuff we got. Now, this mission rewards heroes and mini loot llamas. The quest item rewards completely different things. So we're going to see the envelope in the top right. We're going to get stuff from the quest, which is the envelope, and we're going to get these rewards from actually doing it. So, Hero XP and Loot Llamas. And home base Storm Shield Defense. We got X-Ray tickets and a lead for the Scout Squad. Hero Team Support 1, which means we can use two heroes now, and Scouting Party Lead. Alright, that's it for this time. If you got benefit out of this, please like and subscribe. And thank you. We'll see you next time. This is Mr. Mean Raindrop. 